And let's call upon, a, from across the causeway, I like to say that, CJ Ng. He's going to teach us winning over your international audience. He's the author of Winning the B2B Sales in China and co-author of Sales Map Assessment. In his free time, he helps fellow speakers go into their customers' minds and get more gigs. And last night, he tried to bribe the Exco. Those who are in the convention group, no bribery was actually attempted. It was all in good banter. Over to you, CJ. Thank See, you. the boy is not the only one graft free Malaysia also, to some extent. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try, I try. Oh, where's the clicker? Hang on, let me, let me. I was, I was told the clicker sometimes, uh, oh, okay, this, this is good. Okay, great. And, uh, Right. How many of you, how many of you here agree that Malaysian food is better than Singapore food? So, so, so you can imagine, you can imagine that for the last three years I've been trying to get Malaysian food. And I can only look at pictures and videos and drool. So thank you for having me. Thank you for, for inviting me over to do this presentation. Um, and yeah, that's that's why. I mean, uh, I'm here for the food. Uh, this this is what I this is what I will do in order to get the food. So thank you. <laughs> so some something about me. Something about me. Um, you know. Um, yeah, I'm bilingual. I do a lot of things, but most important thing is still Malaysian food. Uh, I have been living in China since. 2004 to 2020. I've been I've been there for for about 16 years, and what I've been doing is also being a speaker that I've gone to China, Singapore, Malaysia, the U.S. And one of the key things that I found, I mean, the topic is about how you win over international audience, and actually that is a misnomer. It's about how to win over any audience, and one of the key things is this. Now, how many of you have have got this uh, sit situation, whereby you have a customer? The customer says, hey, can you do a speech for me or can you do a training for me? And in this training, let's say it's leadership training, I want you to help my people to build confidence, to be able to communicate well, to have EQ to soothe down people, to soothe over conflicts, to negotiate well, to be able to have good motivational skills and, and get your team to be and super engaged and get things done. And then you say, wait, 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 how long is the speech? And then the guy says, oh yeah, you got a lot of time, it's only uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> so it's like you want to squeeze a lot of things into very little time, right? So one of the key things that <clears throat> we need to understand is how we actually manage the expectations of the audience, of the sponsor, or whoever is taking you to the speech, or training, or coaching, or consulting. And talking about consulting, by the way, uh, what is consult? Are there any consultants over here? Yeah. Uh, right, right. So, so if you're a consultant, consult congratulations. Consult, no? consult or consult. Yeah. Consult. Consult means to calm and then insult. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> congratulations to you. So anyway, so if you're preparing for the speech, the training, and the workshop, interventions, you have what is called the audience. And what the audience want, we are talking about training our eyes and, and um, what, is, uh, what are some of the expectations that you can see out of the training. So the audience would like to have some kind of outcomes. And since they are hiring you, it's obvious that they, they alone are not able to achieve that outcome. So they need to hire you. So you can be the speaker, it can be the trainer, it can be the coach, it can be the consultant. So they hire you, and you are the one that's responsible to achieve that outcome. Right. Simple. Now the question is, just as just I mentioned earlier on, is when the audience say, hey, I need a training on leadership. I need a workshop on sales. I need you to coach my people to do something. Now the first thing to, to ask them back is, sure, thank you. Now, why is this important to you? Can you tell me more? What are some of the things that you would like to see changing in your people, especially in terms of their behaviors? Right? And 
if they give you only a very short amount of time, you may want to prioritize and ask them, no, there, there, it seems like there are a lot of things that you would like me to cover. Which of these will be the most important to you? Which are the things that, given the short amount of time, will, what will be the key things that you want to touch on that is not for negotiation? Right? So these are, these are some things that you want to clarify the why and the what. Now, between why and what, which one do you think is more important? Why? Can, can someone share with me why? <laughs> why is the why so important? It clarifies the agenda, thank you. What else? It is a pain point, it's a desire. It also shows them what is their values? What are they, what is really so important to them? What is central to what they are doing? It can be something as simple as, you know, maybe I just don't like how they are doing things, I want to change that a little bit. It can also be, hey, uh, we are going for some strategic changes. And it's something that's so important for us, it ensures our survival over the next five to ten years. It can be a host of reasons, and it, it, those are the underlying reasons why they engage you in the first place. So keep in mind why it's, it's a lot more important than what. Now, how many of you have uh, read or heard about the book called Start With Why? All right, so you have the why. Yeah, Simon Sinek. Uh, you have the why, you have the what, and then the how. Actually, before you go for the how, it's the who. <laughs> because we are speakers, right? So the key thing is, why are they hiring you in the first place? So yesterday, I think it was Sharon who mentioned about what is the essence of your value? What do you bring to the table? The who in that speaker, the who in the trainer or coach can be who you are, what are the skills, what are your expertise, what do you want to share. More important than that is who you really are. What do you stand for? What are your value system? What is your character? Now, what is it about you that aligns with what they want to achieve to get to their outcomes, to get to where they want to be? So that's, that's something about you. And there's a lot of things about, you know, sometimes we thought we are, we, it's a topic that we know really well, we really want to get the job, and we know we definitely will nail it, and sometimes we miss it. And sometimes, some of those reasons, it could be that maybe you are not the right person, not because you don't have that expertise, but says something about you that may not be a good fit. Just like what Siva was saying about you know, cultural fit and all that. So <clears throat> something about you, what is it about you that brings to the table? What is it that's integral about you that can help them achieve those outcomes you want? And of course, we, we're talking about inside and side actors of why, there is the how, right? So you, you are looking at what are some of the ways to deliver your, uh, your speech, your training, your workshop. It can be what we do like uh, Jacob was doing. We did a lot of activities. We can use videos, we can have discussions, we can have breakout rooms, and so on. But the how is also dependent on what kinds of outcomes your audience want to achieve. So basically, there are, oh, there are different, different types of outcomes, but I can categorize into uh, three main types. There could be operational outcomes. Operational outcomes can be, if you're in communication training, so an operational outcome is how to develop better listening skills, how to read nonverbal clues and signals. So it can be an operational outcome, a how-to kind of thing. One level higher than the operational outcome could be strategic outcomes or business outcomes. And the way when you deliver uh, for operational outcomes or strategic outcomes can be totally different. Because when operational outcomes, it will be a lot of skills training. It will be a lot of skills role play. We, we need to drill something into someone. That's operational outcome. And um, if you're running training especially, uh, we usually like to have a lot of practice. And the metaphor that we use is that 
you know, sometimes learning a skill, and especially an operational skill, is like learning how to swim. If you don't jump into the water, no matter how good the lesson is, you will never learn how to swim. Right? So we have a lot of practice sessions for operational outcomes. For strategic outcomes, it tends to be more thinking. We may do some analysis. We may use tools like business model canvas. We may use some simulations. We want to get people to start thinking, analyzing about what they will be or they want to be three, five, ten years from now. Right, so that's more strategic, uh, it tends to be more business, it tends to be more uh, looking at the macro kind of thing. And on top of that, oh, before I go to that, usually people will say that, hey, uh, does it mean that if you target the operational outcomes, the fees will be lower because it's operational link? <laughs> if you target at strategic outcomes because it sounds so atas, so you can charge a bit more, Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It really depends on what the customer wants, right? We talk about being the audience focus yesterday. So this is, this is something about what the audience wants, what the sponsors want, what the customers want. What exactly, what exactly do they want to be addressed? Now, you may think that you are good in op uh, strategic outcomes, but if operational outcomes is what the customer wants, and you're giving them the wrong content, it's not going to work for you. Anyway, it's just something to, to gain clarification. I may want to ask a few more questions and find out exactly what they want to achieve. Uh, on top of these two is what, it, what we call self-actualization outcome, for a lack of a better word. These are things about what that person really, really want to do at the end of the day. You can, you can call it that, you know, if after 100 years you are no longer physically there, what do you want people to remember you for? What is it that is inside of you that is important to you, is part of your value system, is part of what we call your identity, right? What you want to be or what you want to become. So some, some of the workshops, some of the speeches are about these. And these are some of the, the different things that you may want to get people to do more reflection. Uh, you may want to get people to think deeper about themselves. So those are some of the outcomes and how you adjust to those to achieve those outcomes. Right? And that is in a way how you actually relate and win over different audiences. Ultimately, yes, we know that we need to be audience uh, oriented. We know that you don't want to share like 300,000 ways to do X number of things in a half an hour session. But on the other hand, this is the way of how you actually find out what does the audience want, right? What is important to them? And what are the key priorities now, right? And that, that is uh, the thing that you go for that. Now, since, <clears throat> since I've got a short amount of time, the, the thing is, it's been three years since I last came to Malaysia, so I need to give something free now. Anyone want some, some free, free stuff? Malaysian love free stuff. <laughs> Singaporean lucky love free stuff. <laughs> okay, so uh, before we go to our free stuff, can you, can you turn to one person beside you and share what is one key takeaway today that you have? Give me one minute just to turn around to, to someone. What is something you learn out of these few minutes? Oh, the bell ring. Very well, ah, then don't give away, you know. <laughs> two more minutes. <laughs> you got two more minutes. While you are sharing, this is giveaway number one. So, um, Shama was saying that I created this sales assessment. Don't worry, Raymond, it's different from yours. <laughs> this is... Uh, skills based, this is B2B. You don't need to take the photo because if you look at the booklet behind, there's an ad, it's written there. <laughs> so, uh, the, the, yeah, like, I thought you're taking pictures of me, you know. But actually, you're taking that. Uh, pick some. <laughs> right, so, 
Uh, get, get this, it's, it's from Maps, it's, it's written in the air somewhere behind uh, the last few pages booklet. Have a try, it takes a half an hour, please don't do it today, uh, do it when you're free. The other thing, well, also, um, I actually wanted to use my LinkedIn QR code, but for some reason that was not working. Uh, I've been reflecting to them for more than a week, it's still not working. So this is, this is my, my WhatsApp QR code anyway. But, 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 um, talking about free book, uh, uh, hold on, you know, I can read my mind. Uh, we, there is going to be a free book, and it's actually based on a real book that is on sale in Amazon. Now, the thing is this, one more lucky bigger bonus. Um, I got two books on the table over there. Ta -da. Thank you, thank you, Terry. I got two hard copies over there. The first two persons to send that email, that I get the email based on timestamp, time stamp, will get the hard copy. Uh, okay, so the, the rest I'll send you the, top, the, the PDF version. <laughs> right, the, the, the first two guys will, will get the hard copy, I got, got two more left. <laughs> right, so, um, thank you very much, thank you, for, thank you for having me. It's been great, it's been KL again. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.